This video is on multi-factor authentication factors and attributes. Multi-factor authentication is a layer-based authentication method that uses multiple forms of authentication. It simply means that it requires the user to provide two or more verification factors to gain access to a resource. This means that the attackers will be unable to get access unless they have all the authentication factors of a user. Usually this is combined with user ID and password and a code sent through a phone. We talked about biometric verification, which can be an additional steps to make it even more secure. It is a core component of a strong identity and access management policy. Usernames and passwords are vulnerable to brute force attacks and can be stolen by third parties. Enforcing the use of multi-factor authentication factor like a thumbprint or physical hardware key means increased confidence that your organization is going to stay safe from cyber criminals. So let's talk about the three factors of multi-authentication. We have something you know, something you have, and something you are. Something you know is like a password. Treat it as a knowledge. Something you have is like a badge or your phone. Something in your possession. And then something you are. Includes things like biometrics like fingerprints or voice. Treat this as inherence. In addition to multi-factor authentication factors that we just discussed, there's also multi-factor authentication attributes. Attributes can be used as an addition to factors for increased defense in depth. However, do note, attributes by themselves aren't considered factors because on their own, they do not confirm a user's identity. It can only be used as an addition. So let's go over the attributes. First, we have somewhere you are. With somewhere you are, you can check the user or system's location. Facebook and Google uses this a lot and get suspicious if you log in from different IP address. There's also something you can do. This is an attribute that has to do with authenticating via gestures. It could vary from waving in a certain way or clicking and tapping a certain pattern, like on your phone. And then we have something you exhibit. This is a little bit more tricky because it relies on particular personality traits or even neurological behaviors. And if one day you act differently, it could be an indication that someone is trying to impersonate you because you're not exhibiting your natural behaviors. And lastly, we got someone you know. Example of this is when you try to walk into a corporate building and a trusted employee comes down to the lobby and vouch for you and letting the security guard that you're someone to be trusted.